Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena and I bring you today's word for October 15, 2018. I'm teaching a series entitled Standing on a Word from God. And this is part 34 of the overall series. And now I'm teaching, first I taught on Abraham. Now I'm teaching on the life of David. And this is part six of the life of David. I have a lot to cover in this story this morning. So let's get straight into it. So the title of today's message is Enjoy the Journey. This is Standing on the Word from God, part 34. As a believer, you, you must get to the point where you can enjoy the journey, where you truly enjoy the ride. So on Friday, we saw how David, who seemingly attempted to go back to his normal life after he was anointed right, by the prophet, was quickly summoned by the king to serve as the king's personal musician. Now, I can only imagine how this went over in Jesse's household. I mean, first of all, think about it. Think about it from this perspective. When you read these stories, like, you know, step back for a minute and just think about the context. First, the king's personal prophet came to town, right? Came to Bethlehem and it started like a, a commotion in town. And then once he got there, he was like, oh, no, no, I'm not here to talk to everybody. Uh, I, I just need to visit Jesse, where's Jesse's house? And so they point out Jesse's house. He goes to Jesse's house and you know, people are nosy, so they're paying attention to that. And while he's there, uh, basically, he kind of lets them know that he's there to perform something. He's on an assignment from God. And so he's going to anoint one of his sons, Jesse's sons, to be the next king of Israel. He goes through all the boys, Eliab, Abinadab, etc. And there's none of them. And um, David, you know, was conveniently left out of the lineup. And so God calls, he says, go find the boy. One of David's brothers comes and get, gets him out of the field. He has to go back. And David was anointed by the prophet right in front of the people who conveniently left him out of the lineup and he was anointed to be the next king of Israel. However, after the prophet left and the spirit of the Lord was upon David, the Bible says from that moment it was upon him in, in power. So he was anointed to be the king, but then everybody kind of went back to their normal lives. So they go back and after all the commotion, all of that, everybody tries to go back to normal. And then a few days later, here's somebody knocking on the door and says, Mr. Jesse, King Saul requests that you send your son David, the shepherd. Now, somebody shows up at the door and knows David by name and says, listen, the king wants your son. And you have eight boys. Want, want to be very clear. The king wants David, the shepherd boy, to show up in the palace. And so when you think about this, I want you to notice that David did nothing to initiate any of this. He did nothing. I mean, think about it. David was minding his own business when uh, all of a sudden, one of his brothers got, got him out of the field to be anointed, right? So he walks in and they have an impromptu coronation ceremony, like, bam, he was coronated to be the king, although it would not happen for many years. And then later, after he attempted to, to go back to his normal life, he was minding his own business again when somebody came and got him again. This time it was a messenger from the palace with his name in his mouth, says, listen, the king wants to see you. You need to go. And so what am I saying? The reason why I like to highlight the fact that David did nothing, that Abraham did nothing, that I did nothing, you did nothing, is to highlight the grace of God. David was a grace case from end to end. This is the grace of God. This is the hand of God in operation. This is God's plan, a plan that, he's, that he planned from the foundations of the world. And the Lord was setting these things in motion. This was not something David asked for. It was not something he connived to do. It was not something he, he uh, uh, pleaded for, believed God for, released his faith for, none of those things. This was completely God. This was a a grace case. And that's how it is with God. He will set things in motion so that we can become the men and women that God has called us to be. So that when people read our life story, we're not the star. God is the star on every page of our life story because we are a grace case. It was God working in us, working with us, working through us. That's how it was with David. That's how it should be with us. So Jesse, going back to the story, of course, Jesse's not going to turn down the king. So Jesse, Jesse was like, all right, fine. Hey, David, you got to go. The king wants to see you. And so he sent his son, but then he thought about it. He was like, hold on, hold on, hold on for a minute. He says, I, I, I don't know because he, see, Jesse didn't understand grace. So he was like, well, maybe I don't want to get in trouble with the king. So he sends a young goat, a donkey loaded with bread and a wine skin full of new wine. <laughs> and he says, let me send some gifts to the king because I don't want to have no issues with this man. Be See, his faith and his confidence was not in God. He was not thinking that this was a grace case. He was thinking human effort. He was thinking personal performance. He was thinking uh, human relations. You know what I'm saying? He was thinking like he had to make something happen. He didn't know that God was already making this thing happen. So he sent the gifts 
uh, in his mind, he was doing the right thing. And um, so David goes and David goes and, and David's like, man, I don't know what's happening. I mean, one day I get called out of the field and now I'm anointed to be the next king of Israel. And I feel the spirit of the Lord on me. And then I try to go back to my normal life. And now another person comes and now I'm walking into the palace. And, and notice how David didn't know what was going on, but he rolled with it. He didn't know what was going on, but his his heart was open to whatever God was doing. See, God is going to open doors for you that no man can close. And when he opens the door, you have to just be open. You have to enjoy the ride. You have to enjoy the journey. You have to be like, all right, Lord, if that's, I wasn't planning on this. I didn't ask for this. This is not in my, in my, uh, uh, on my vision board. This is not in my journal. I'm not believing God for this. I didn't have no scriptures I was standing on, but if you're leading me this way, then my heart is open. Even though I don't understand it, as you reveal to me to go, I'm going to go. David went to the palace and started ministering to the king. Uh, and, and so he started walking there and, and he was ministering to the king that he was supposed to replace, that he was destined to replace, but he was doing whatever the Lord did, whatever the Lord said. And so when this tormenting spirit came and bothered Saul, David would play the harp and then the spirit would go away and Saul would have peace. So this caused the king to send this message to Jesse. He sent another messenger. They didn't have text messages. They didn't have email. He had to send a man all the way back to Bethlehem to say, hey, listen, this is what the king says. Please let David remain in my service for I am very pleased with him. And then the Bible says that Saul loved David very much and David became his armor bearer. David became somebody that was right by the side of the king, the king that he was destined to replace. So what does this mean to you today? Man, that was a lot in that story, right? So I could teach, you know me, I could teach on that for days. But for this morning, I just want to give you two things. What does this mean to you today on this Monday morning as we seek to set the tone for the whole week? Open up your heart now to receive what God is saying. Two things. Number one, there's a certain level of mystery associated with walking with God. There's a, there's a certain level of mystery to walking with God. When you walk with God, you're not going to have all the answers. And you got to be okay with that. You got to get comfortable with a certain level of discomfort. God made plans for us. Look, look at me for a minute, just so we're clear. God made plans for you. God made plans for me before the world began. He then reveals those plans to us and he does so in his timing. We only get to know what he chooses to reveal when he chooses to reveal it. So this makes our life about God and not about us. We're not the captain of our own ship. God is. So we are acknowledging him in all of our ways because he's the one that's already visited our future. He already has all the answers. So why not consult with him? See, God will reveal himself, but he does not have to explain himself. God reveals some things to David and then he set some things in motion. And I'm sure David had no clue <laughs> what was going on. He didn't. He had no clue how ultimately his life was going to pan out, but he was willing. Here's the point of today's message. He was willing to enjoy the ride. He did not fight the process. As a believer today, we can learn from David. Our heart must be open to whatever God is doing, however he's doing it, whatever he wants to do in our lives. Our heart just needs to be open. Faith says yes to God's grace. As we walk and live by faith, we won't know everything. I wish I could tell you that you would, but you won't. The truth is you are not going to know everything. God will reveal things to you. He will reveal to you enough light, enough vision for you to maximize the season that you're in, but he's not going to tell you everything. He will only give us, he's not going to give you all the answers when you want them. And matter of fact, if he gave you all the answers, you would not require faith. So God is going to tell you what you need to know when you need to know it. But other than that, you have to open up your heart to whatever God is doing and then live by faith, trusting God the whole way, trusting that he loves you and that he cares for you and that he has a plan and this plan is going to work out and it's going to be better than the plans that you could ever come up with in your own mind. Number two and finally, I only have two points today. When God opens a door, look at me, when God opens a door, your job is to walk through it with confidence. You walk through that door. Listen, you may not know. I mean, your, God will open a door for you and send you into a room that you've never been in. He will send you into an environment that you don't feel comfortable in. He will, he will, walk, he will 
place you in a, in a position around people that you're like, oh my God, I've never, I don't have the experience I don't, to be in this room. I don't have the education to be in this room. I, I, I don't have the track record to be in this room. I don't, oh my God. And, and, and God will place you in that and you have to walk through that door with confidence and then you grow into it. You go into that room and God will cause you to grow into that space and then he'll open up another door for you and then you'll feel, oh my God, again. And then he'll cause you to grow into that space. The prophet anointed David to be the king, the king of Israel. The spirit of the Lord was upon him with power from that moment. But afterwards, he went right back to his normal life. He had no earthly idea. He was like, man, the, the prophet said, I'm supposed to be the king. I'm back out here with my father's sheep. How in the world am I supposed to wind up in the palace? How in the world? And I'm a shepherd boy. I, I mean, I'm from Bethlehem. Nobody knows me. How in the, how am I supposed to be the king? How, how can God, how can I make this happen? God is saying, you don't have to make it happen. I'm the one that called you. I'm the one that destined you. I'm the one that's going to make it happen. While he was out there in the field wondering, how in the world am I going to wind up in the palace? He didn't even know it, but God had his name in the king's mouth in the palace. It, he, God saw to it that somebody brought up David's name to the king and, and the king said, go get David, Jesse's son out of Bethlehem. Your name is in somebody's mouth and you don't even know it. God will cause your name to be in the mouth of somebody that can open a door for you that nobody can close. And you don't know how to, how God is this going to happen? You're, you don't have to know if God doesn't reveal it to you. You just open up your heart and say, Lord, I'm open to whatever you want to do, whatever you've called me to do for such a time as this. I know I may not know how to listen. All I know is I'm walking with you. I'm going to enjoy the ride. And, and when you say left, I go left. When you say right, I go right. You, whatever you tell me to say, I'll say. Wherever you tell me to go, I'll go. And I am I am open to this journey. I'm going to heaven, but doggone it, I'm going to enjoy the ride. I will maximize my purpose and potential while I'm in the land of the living. I am destined. I'm determined to get out of me everything that you planted in me while I'm here. Before I die, I will not die with my destiny still locked up inside of me. I will not die with my best days on the inside. I'm going to die empty. I will get out of me everything you implanted in me before the world began. This is how we live. You just open up your heart to whatever God is going to do. David Watt said, "You, I got to go to the palace. Let's go. He was trusting God the whole way. He was trusting God when he had to tend for his tend his father's sheep and he had to trust God in the palace. Watch this. When he was tending his father's sheep, when, uh, one time he had like what I call a uh, uh, hand to paw camp hand to paw combat, right? Not hand to hand combat, hand to paw camp combat. He had a fight with a lion and he had a fight with a bear and he killed both with his bare hands while he was out there in the plains. And the same God that, that kept David in the plains was the same God that was going to keep David in the palace. I'm talking about a God that kept you yesterday and that same God that kept you yesterday will keep you tomorrow. And so you trust God. Whatever he tells you to do, you do it. Wherever he tells you to go, you go. Whatever door he opens, you walk through it and you walk through it with confidence, with your eyes fixed and focused focused on him. Listen, I've been there many times where God leads me into a place where I'm like, oh man, I feel uncomfortable. I've never been operating on this level before, but I am determined to look to you, Father. You sent me into this room. Please don't make me look stupid. You give me the words and you perform the work and I give myself over to you to be used of you for your glory. Let's close this message out this morning. Man, I feel like preaching. Let's close this out with a declaration of faith. I want you now to repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Say this over your life. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I expect you to open doors for me that I could not open for myself. I expect you, Father, to set things in motion that propel me into my destiny. I, I expect you to work in my life in ways that far exceed human power and ability. I trust you, Father, with my whole heart. I will not know everything. <laughs> and while that is somewhat difficult to accept, I accept the fact that you love me. You reveal to me what I need to know when I need to know it. I get to know what you allow me to know. And in the areas where you haven't spoken yet, I simply trust you. I know I'm going to heaven, but I'm also determined to enjoy the ride. I enter this day ready to experience the journey with you. 
I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Sign up on the right-hand side of the website. There's a subscribe button there. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. As you head into this day, as you head into this week, be determined to just enjoy the ride. Whatever God tells you, whatever he leads you to do, do it. Whatever he leads you to say, say it. Wherever he leads you to go, go. Whatever doors he opens, walk through those doors with confidence, looking to him every step of the way. And before you leave the screen, do me a favor. Share this with Someone that you know, share this on your social media, on your timeline, with your friends. And if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook Live or live stream, leave me a comment so I can see how this message has been a blessing to you. Walk into this week looking unto him. God bless you.